My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 169 in the series of basic math. Today we'll solve a problem on the topic of linear equations. And today is our 12th, 12th lesson. Originally I had planned to make only 10 of them and hence the tag instead of calling it 11 of 10 which is kind of confusing or 12, 12 out of 10. I just call them 11, uh, 10A, 10B and 10C. This is our 10C which is the 12th one, the last one in the series of the originally planned 10. Here's the problem. In the, on the, here's the problem. We are told that 5 fourth x plus 1 plus 3 halves x minus 1 minus 4 fifth x plus 3 equals x plus 4. One more time. 5 over 4 times x plus 1 plus 3 over 2 times x minus 1 minus 4 over 5 plus times x plus 3 equals x plus 4. What I want you to do now is to do the problem yourself as always, as, as I always tell you. After you have done the problem, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. I will get out of your way, okay? Here we go. All right. The very first thing you need to understand here is that it will be much easier if you get rid of this denominator. Don't multiply everything by the, by the, by the fraction. That will be, be a hellish thing to do. Get rid of this denominator somehow. I see a 4, I see a, I see a 2, I see a 5. What's the smallest number that you can think of that is a multiple of 5 and a 2 and a 4? The smallest number, the least common multiplier of 4, 2 and 5 is 20. Let's multiply the entire equation by 20. We can get rid of the 5, we can get rid of the 2, we can get rid of the 4. Let's multiply the entire equation by 20. So here we go. So the first term is going to be 20 times 5 over 4 times x plus 1. That's our first term. We're done with it. The second term is going to be, this is 3 halves, so it's going to be 20 times 3 halves times x minus 1. That's our second term. We're done with that. And then minus, this is minus right here. We have 4 fifths, so it's going to be 20 times 4 fifths times x plus 3. And that is done. And that has to equal this amount times 20. 20 times x plus 4. Right here. So we have multiplied the entire equation by 20. Do it in a neat way that makes it easier for you to see. Here's the 20 that we're talking about right here. We multiply the first term by 20. We multiply the second term by 20. We multiply the third term on the left hand side by 20. And we did the same thing to the right hand side. So the entire equation is balanced. We have not changed anything at all. We simply multiply both sides of the equation by 20. Now we can get rid of our denominator. We see 20 on the top, we see 4 on the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. 4 is going to go away, 20 is going to become 5. 5 times 5 is 25, so we end up with 25x plus 1. We see 20 on the top, we see 2 at the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 2 is going to go away, 20 is going to become 10. 10 times 3 is 30, so we end up with 30x minus 1, right here. And then we have minus. We, have we see 5 at the bottom, we see 20 on the top, let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 is going to go away and 20 becomes 4. 4 times 4 is 16 times x plus 4, x plus 3 rather. And that has to equal, that has to equal what we see on this side, which is 20 times x plus 4. That's it. The rest is simple, the rest is down here. We just, open, we just have to open the parentheses, collect the like terms, bring the unknown on one side, the known quantity on the other side, and voila, we have our answer. Let's do it. 25 plus x is going to be 25 x. 25 plus 1 is simply 25. 30 times x is just 30 x. 30 times minus 1 is going to be minus 30. Minus 16 times x is going to be minus 16 x. Minus 16, minus 16 times 3. How much is 16 times 3? 16 times 3. If you were to come up to me and ask me, how much is 16 times 3? My answer, as you know by now, if you've been watching my video, you know what I'm going to say. If you come up to me and ask me what is 16 times 3, my answer would be, how the hell do I know? I know what 15 times 3 is. Then I do know. 15 times 3 is 45. If 15 threes are 45, we don't have 15 threes, we have 16 threes. We just have one more 3. So it's 45 plus 3 is 48. And it's the minus, with the minus sign on the front. And here we have 20 times x, which is 20x. And 20 times 4 is going to be 80. You just have to pay attention. Make sure you don't end up making some silly mistake. Let's go combine the like terms. We can first collect the x, so here we have positive 25x, 
positive 30x and the negative 30x. Let's combine them together first. Don't worry about the other side yet. Or better yet, let's keep it simple. We see 20x here and I see a 30x here. We see a 20x here and we see a 30x here. Let's subtract 20x from both sides. Let's keep our life simple. Let's subtract 20x from here. If we subtract 20x from 30x, 30x minus 20x is 10x. So this becomes 10x. And if we subtract 20x from here, this 20x is going to go away. Voila, it's very simple now. So let's start again. Let's start again. 25, that makes it much easier. 25 plus 10, 25 plus 10 is 35. 35 minus 15, listen carefully, 35, 35 minus 15 would have been 20. It's not 15, it is 16. So it's not going to be 20, it's going to be 19. We're not subtracting 15, we're subtracting 16. It's going to be 19x. Now let's combine the numerical value. So we have positive 25 and a negative 30. That's a negative 5. Positive 25 and a negative 30, that's negative 5. Negative 5 and a negative 48. Negative 5 and a negative 48. Negative 5 and a negative 48. 48 plus 5 is 50 plus 3, 53. Negative 53. And that has to equal this 80 right here. I hope you're with me. Now let's just add 50 to both sides. Or 53 rather. It goes away. Let's add 53 and we end up with 3 and 13. Voila. We end up with 19x equals 19x equals 133. Now, before you worry about anything else, always it's always a good idea to look at the simplest scenario first before you make your life uh, too miserable. Simplest scenario here is to assume that the value of dx is some whole number before you, before you go very nilly. If it's whole number, we have to figure out what 133 divided by 19 is. There are no common factors between 133 and 19. Why, why, how do we know that there are no common factors? In other words, x equals 133 divided by 19, but we cannot reduce it. And how do we know that? Because 19 is a prime number. 19 is a prime number, we simply have to figure out how many 19s in 133. And this is where a little bit thinking comes into it. How many 19s, how many 19s in a 133? Okay, I'm explaining too much here, but for a reason. Instead of 19, had it been 20, we know 20 times 6 is 120. 20 times 6 is 120, this is 133. So obviously it's more than 6. Let's try 7. Let's try 7. So that's one reason to try 7 right away. I'm going to tell you another reason. Second reason why we would try 7, I'm going to show you here. We're trying to figure out how many 19s make 133. Listen carefully. How many 19s make 133? Well, obviously it's not times 1. How, how do I know it's 9 times 1? Not because 19 times 1 is 19. That's not what I'm trying to make you understand. What I'm trying to make you understand is something different. It cannot be 19 times 1 or 19 times 11 or 19 times 311 or 19 times 4311. This amount cannot be 19 times 4311. Why? Because 9 times 1, 9 times 1 is not, 9 times 1 is 9. We should have a 9 of the unit digit. Had this with the true. Whatever this number is, unit digit should have been 9. It had been 9 times 1. It's not 19 times 1, it's not 19 times 2, because 19 times 2, 19 times 2 would be 18, it should be 8, and in 8, it's not 3. I'm, 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 I'm holding your finger, I'm, I'm holding your hand out too much, because uh, we already established that we should try 7, because 120 times 6, because, uh, because 20 times 6, 20 times 6 is 120, we have 120. We have 133, which is more than 120. That's one reason we have more than 120. And it's not 20, it's 19. Obviously, it's more than 6. So obviously, it's not 3, because 9 times 3 is 27. It should end in a 7. It's not 4, that will end as 4. It's not 5. 9 times 5 will end in 5 here. It's not 6. It's not 6. How do we know it's not 6? Because 9, 6, uh, 9, 6, uh, 54. It should end in a 4. It has to be 7. It has to be 7. Why? Because 9 7, 9 7s are 63. And how do I know that 9 7s are 63? Don't look at it as 9 7. Don't count by 9s, count by 7. 7 9, how much are 7 9s? 7 9s are 63. How do we know 7 9s are 63? I'm making a very big fuss about a very small thing in the event that you have trouble understanding, uh, remembering these things, because sometimes I do. How do I know that 7 9s are 63? Because I know if I have 7 10s, or 10 sevens. If I have 10 sevens, it's 70. We don't have 10 sevens, we only have 9 sevens. 
you take away 17 from the 70, that's 63, and there is your 3. Carry 6, 7 ones are 7, 7 ones are 7, 7 plus 6 is 13, and there is your 13, right there, 113. Hence, x is equal to 7. Do you understand? But we took a very long time to figure it out. It's very simple. It has to be more than 6. It has to be more than text. That only takes a fraction of a second to see that 120 times 6 is one, uh, 12 times, rather 20 times 6. 20 times 6, we're dividing by 19. So 20 times 6 is 120. This is 133. It's got to be more than 6. So you try 7 immediately. It only takes a fraction of a second to see that. And 7 part also confirms immediately. Your gut feeling is confirmed immediately because 7 times 9 is 63, it ends in a 3, it passes the unit digit test, it ends in a 3, 7 times 9 is 63, it ends in a 3, so you try by 7, that's all, the answer is 7. The very last thing we need to do right now is to confirm our answer, make sure it is in fact the correct answer. Our assertion is that x equals 7, that's what we are, that's what we are claiming, that's what we are asserting, let's find out if it is in fact true. We need the room for it, I'm going to have to erase this step right here and do the verification in this step right here. Let's do it together, shall we? So x equals 7 is what we're claiming. Keep that in mind. So 5 over 4 times 7 plus 1 plus 3 halves 7 minus 1 minus 4 fifths 7 plus 3 and that has to equal 7 plus 4. That's what we're claiming. That's my 7 by the way. That's a 7. 7 minus 1. See? 7 x 7 minus 1. Let's do it out very quickly. I'm taking too long. 7 plus 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. This is 8 divided by 4 we get 2. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 7 minus 1. 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 3 times 3 is 9 and 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2 minus 4 times 2 is 8 and that has to equal 11. Let's see if it does. Let's see if it does. Oh, there you go. 9, 9 minus 8 is 1. 9 minus 8 is 1 and 1 plus 10 is 11. There you go. It works. It works. It is in fact the correct answer. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.